She rinsed the flannel in the water, rubbed more soap on it, and began to wash his chest. You're looking fine this evening, she said. They operated on you as soon as you came in. They did a marvelous job. You'll be all right. I've got a brother in the RAF, she added, flying bombers. He said, I went to school in Brighton. She looked up quickly. Well, that's fine, she said. I expect you'll know some people in the town. Yes, he said. I know quite a few. It's nice to be washed, he said when she'd finished. I feel better. He was feeling his face with his hands. I need a shave. We'll do that tomorrow, she said. Perhaps you can do it yourself then. That night he could not sleep. He lay awake thinking of the Junkers 88 and of the hardness of the water. He could think of nothing else. They were Junker 88s, he said to himself. I know they were, and yet it is not possible because they would not be flying around so low over here in broad daylight. I know that it is true, and yet I know that it is impossible. Perhaps I am ill. Perhaps I am behaving like a fool and do not know what I am doing or saying. Perhaps I am delirious. He woke up just as the first light of day was showing through the slit in the curtains over the window. The room was still dark, but he could tell that it was already beginning to get light outside. He lay looking at the gray light which was showing through the slit in the curtain, and as he lay there, he remembered the day before. He remembered the Junkers 